My name is H.A. Goodman, and I'm an author, columnist, and journalist. To support this YouTube channel, go to my Patreon link below in the description section. Subscribe to this channel. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I want to thank you for your support. We are going to hit 100,000 very, very soon. Um, and that's a testament to your voice as well as mine. My books are below, but her top secret emails and but her deleted emails have something like over 155 star reviews on Amazon. Book five will be coming out shortly. I just, I had to, I had to check if this was a parody account. And then my first reaction is I love this freaking guy. I voted for the policies of Bernie Sanders and Jill Stein. I want to bring home our soldiers from war. I want to ban fracking. I want to break up too big to fail banks. Democrats don't want that. Uh, they, they hate that, those, those objectives. Which is why I can enjoy Trump as political retribution, especially since Democrats cheated Bernie. And I'll get to how they did it with media help. I will be announcing the most dishonest and corrupt media awards of the year. <laughs> this is President Trump. <laughs> I will be announcing the most dishonest and corrupt media awards of the year on Monday at 5 o'clock. Subjects will cover dishonesty and bad reporting <laughs> in various categories from the fake news media. Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, my God. Not only do you have fake news stories about WikiLeaks, about Julian Assange, about the Trump-Russia collusion, which never took place. This is just unbelievable. I'll read you. Maybe Trump will read uh, Glenn Greenwald and Lee Fong's October 9, 2016. Exclusive new email leak reveals Clinton campaign's cozy relationship with the press. I'm just going to tweet that out again. On January 25th, uh, one January 25th st uh, strategy document designed to plant stories on Clinton's decision-making process about whether to run for president singled out reporter Maggie Haberman, then of Politico, now covering the election for the New York Times as a, quote, friendly journalist who has, quote, teed up stories for them in the past and, quote, never disappointed them. Nick Merrill, the campaign press uh, secretary, produced the memo according to the document metadata. We have a very good relationship with Maggie Haberman of Politico over the last year. We have had her tee up stories for us before and have never been disappointed. Must be nice to tee up stories. What kind of overt and blatant collusion? Then you have Glenn Thrush. Does this? Oh no, they don't. They don't discuss Glenn Thrush here. Glenn Thrush, who. basically gave an article to Podesta pre-publication but you have here the as the intercept previously reported pundits regularly featured on cable news programs were paid by the Clinton campaign without any disclosure when they appeared so these surrogates were paid um TV pundits praise Hillary Clinton on air failed to disclose financial ties to her campaign. So it, it's it's just unbelievable. Then you have so in addition to in addition to the New York Times, um, pundits on air getting paid by the Clinton campaign. Let's just type in Glenn Thrush, hack. That's all you need to do on Google. Sorry, not sorry. Thrush doubles down on Podesta emails. He wrote this to Podesta. Because I have become a hack, I will send you the whole section that pertains to you, Thrush writes Podesta. Please don't share or tell anyone I did this. Tell me if I fucked up anything. Please don't share or tell anyone I did this. Whenever someone tells you don't tell anyone I did this, big, big problem. Then we have one guy who wrote a hit piece on me who actually worked for Jared Kushner 
the reason that's relevant is that this guy uh, continues to spread the Trump-Russia myth, especially pertaining to Kushner, and he worked for Jared Kushner, which is hilarious. This is a guy who wrote a hit piece on me last year, two years ago. I can, we can go on forever. Let's, let's, why don't we just go on forever? Let's just continue. Then you have the fake news CNN story about WikiLeaks. that never took place. We have the um, the accusation that Trump Jr. got emails uh, prior to the public, which was absolutely false. The Washington Post also misreported that story. The U.S. media suffered its most humiliating debacle in ages and now, refuse all, and now refuses all transparency over what happened. Friday was one of the most embarrassing days for the U.S. media in quite a long time. The humiliation orgy was kicked off by CNN with MSNBC and CBS close behind and countless public, uh, pundits, commentators, and operatives joining the party throughout the day. By the end of the day, it was clear that several of the nation's largest and most influential news outlets had spread an explosive but completely false story to millions of people. The, spe- the spectacle began Friday morning at 11 a.m., when the most trusted name in news spent 12 straight minutes on air flamboyantly hyping an exclusive bombshell report that seemed to prove that WikiLeaks last September had secretly offered the Trump campaign, even Donald Trump himself, special access to the Democratic National Committee emails before they were published on the Internet. The the entire revelation was based on an email that CNN strongly implied it had exclusively obtained and had in its possession. The email was a smoking gun in CNN's extremely excited mind because it was dated September 4th, 10 days before WikiLeaks began promoting access to those emails online. It's, it, it's, com- it's impossible to convey with words what a spectacularly devastating scoop CNN believed it had, so it's necessary to watch it for yourself. Okay, then they go on. There was one small problem with this story. It was fundamentally false in the most, embarrassingly w- in the most embarrassing way possible. Hours after CNN broadcast... Uh, broadcasted its story and then hyped it over and over. The Washington Post reported that CNN got a key fact of the of the story wrong. The email was not dated September 4th, as CNN claimed, but rather September 14th, uh, which means it was sent after, after WikiLeaks had already published access to DNC emails online. <laughs> this is a profanity alert. These fucking clowns are wrong on everything. And they'll have you believe that you're you're the big problem. You're the one who, just thinking um, critically, asking questions, kind of like why would Clinton be better than Bernie? Even a question like that in 2015, they'll write hit pieces on you. They'll attack you. That's when when people say to me, "Oh, H A." Why are you going after uh, Jenk Uecker and all these other people? What if it, what if they came after you? They already did, and they failed, and I got bigger, and my voice was amplified. They already came after me. They wrote, what, like eight, nine hit pieces on me. Type in my name, and you'll get a whole bunch of hit pieces. Raw Story, Daily Beast, uh, Wonkette, Daily Banter. All of these, they, they couldn't stand me. They still can't. I can't stand them. But the difference is I've been right. They've been wrong. So when Trump wants to go ahead and do his um, end of the year or beginning of the year uh, fake news awards, CNN, I mean, give me your thoughts below. CNN has to be number one. No Washington Post. Uh, I don't know. Give me your thoughts. Do you think CNN or the Washington Post gets Trump's fake news? (laughs) Um... I don't know what he's going to do. The most dishonest and corrupt media awards of the year. <laughs> this is great. Um, so you have the media going after... He, now, bear with me on this. They attacked Bernie Sanders. The Washington Post did even. They attacked Bernie Sanders. They propped up Hillary Clinton. They worked with Clinton, the Clinton campaign. Put, going, uh, going to Podesta's for dinner. Uh, or a dinner engagement where uh, Podesta invited a whole bunch of people 
That's in the, the, the Podesta emails. You have collusion with the Clinton campaign. You have fake news stories just to hurt WikiLeaks and Julian Assange simply for publishing the words of Hillary Clinton that showed corruption. And we, go, we can go on forever. The Trump-Russia story, it, there, Trump never colluded with Russia. Russia had zero impact on the election, and the DNC was never hacked. How do you know? How do we know? Read the warranty disclaimers on the ODNI and DHS reports. Then you have the New York Times. Oh, that's, they're up there. And all of Vox. Oh, Vox should be number one. Too bad they're too insignificant for Trump to even rank very high in terms of fake news. But all of them say, well, the intelligence community concluded. No, the intelligence community didn't, uh, didn't conclude anything. They assessed based on information that should not be confused with fact. That's what the warranty disclaimers state. Give me your thoughts below. It's pretty hilarious. This is what, you know, people say, oh my God, Trump. He's not dignified. If you destroy Libya and your President Obama, where's the dignity in that? If you raise 10 billion, help raise $10 billion and preside over a theft of $10 billion in Haiti, where's the dignity in that? Now we're finding out that they overtly tried to silence Black Lives Matter. And all the people who yell Nazis, white supremacists online, they're completely silent. The Clinton campaign did exactly what Harvey Weinstein wanted and silenced Black Lives Matter. When you had unarmed black citizens being killed under President Obama's tenure. And it was never white supremacy, um, uh, Nazi, uh, white nationalism back then. It was just shrug shoulders, oh well, you know, that's America. It wasn't linked t to Obama, even though Loretta Lynch could have done something to prevent all of that. And she did nothing. She actually stated that police departments don't have to uh, record the number of civilians killed. She, that was she could have made that an issue. She didn't. You had Sandra Bland, Eric Garner, um, Trayvon Martin, uh, Philando Castile, John Crawford. You had all of these people who were killed unarmed. And it was under President Obama, and nothing. That's why the fake news, that's why there's, there should be these fake news awards. It's unbelievable how easily people are manipulated. And I never realized how easily people are manipulated until I, until I saw the reaction um, by the Hillary bots in 2015. I'll never forget the fervor and the just the blind devotion to Clinton by people who thought they were the most pragmatic, intelligent people in the room, and they all were just complete failures. And I was right, and you were right. Clinton was always going to lose. And I was saying that when I, my, one of my first YouTube uh, segments was that Clinton could not win. You can disagree with me if you watch this channel. I love my conservative viewers, you know that. You can disagree with me. But Bernie would have won. A united, the, pro the thing is, a united Democratic Party wins an election. United, meaning, I mean, I'm not a Democrat and I'm no longer a progressive, but I, I want bold policies like bringing home our soldiers, breaking up too big to fail banks. If, it, if, if, if a political party let's say the Democratic Party, uh, focus on those issues, which is what Bernie Sanders wanted. You would have a person like me, and you would have uh, uh, me and then Peter Dow voting for the same person. You would have the two extremes of whatever you want to call it, political spectrum that would encompass a person who might vote or who could vote Democrat, voting for one person. Then you win Ohio. 
uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and 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 Iowa. Uh, sorry, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. You win swing states with a united Democratic Party voting for Bernie Sanders. But I will never vote Democrat unless I'll never vote for any political party that doesn't want to bring back soldiers from our perpetual wars. So Republicans don't and Democrats don't. So they're the same side of a coin. I want to bring home our soldiers. I don't want these perpetual wars where half to two thirds of all the Americans killed and wounded were victims of IED blasts in Iraq and Afghanistan. These are counterinsurgency wars. Then when, when one moron writes a hit piece on me, he's like, oh yeah, all he does is focus on, on ending counterinsurgency wars. It's so stupid. They don't even, they're like completely brainwashed. And then these are the same people who are anti-gun. <laughs> but you have the Second Amendment. It's completely different from these perpetual wars. It can go on forever. Point is, the Democratic Party today, you, you can, whatever you want, hates guns at home, has no problem with Clinton weapons deals, has no problem with perpetual wars, has no problem with, with problems with neocon policies, and certainly has no problems with the racism, the overt racism within the Democratic Party. They just want to sit on a pedestal and lecture. That's why when I go after these vapid, weak, pathetic, quote-unquote, liberal channels that then get outed for their own racism and mis literally, literal misogyny, where they say women are genetically inferior, like Cenk Uger stated, nobody calls them out. Give me your thoughts. Um... I think CNN's pro CNN and the Washington Post, CNN and the Washington Post or New York Times might be number one for Trump's uh, ranking of <laughs> biggest fake news outlets. Give me your thoughts. Who do you think? Who do you think will win? Thank you so much for listening. Watch me on Vimeo as well. And subscribe right now to this YouTube channel. We're almost at 94,000 subscribers. For a channel without, like, bells and whistles, just giving you a unique take on politics, it's pretty good. 100,000 subscribers without a defined base of supporters. I have people from all over the political spectrum. It's pretty good. And it's a testament to your voice as well as mine. Thank you so much for listening. Subscribe right now, please.